topic today is an issue of interest and importance to the entire membership of the United Nations, particularly during the current extraordinary circumstances when the world looks to the Security Council for solutions and leadership. Given the paucity of time, I will restrict my intervention to five issues of key concern to India. One, the selection of chairs of Security Council subsidiary bodies and distribution of pen holderships must be made through a process which is open, transparent, based on exhaustive consultations and with a more integrated perspective. The consensus of the elected 10 on chairships of subsidiary bodies to be assumed by the E10 themselves must be honored by the P5. For the P5 to decide, even in the 21st century, as to what role should go eventually to the E10 reflects a continuation of the mindset of the post-1945 era to the victors belong the spoils. This is simply unacceptable. Two, the working methods of the United Nations Security Council sanctions committees continue to dent the credibility of the UN Security Council for genuine evidence-based listing proposals for globally sanctioned terrorists to be blocked without giving any due justification is uncalled for and smacks of doublespeak when it comes to the Council's commitment in tackling the challenge of terrorism. The working methods of sanction committees must emphasize transparency, objectivity in listing and delisting, and should not be based on political considerations. Three, obsoleteness and irrelevance of some of its agenda items. Mr. President, there are items on the agenda of the Security Council on which discussions have not taken place since the UN's creation. There is hence a case for beginning a discussion into the review of items on the matters of which the Council is seized in a realistic and forward-looking manner and note 507 on procedural matters provides ample guidance on this. Four, and most importantly, merely fixing the working methods of the Security Council will never be good enough to rectify its fundamental flaw, its lack of representative character. To continue to deny member states of the Global South a voice and role in the Council's decision-making only lowers the Council's credibility. Five, UNGA Decision 62-557, which all member states subscribe to, has identified five pillars of comprehensive reform of the UN Security Council, of which improvement in working methods is just one. Therefore, unless we address the issue in its entirety, we would continue to be accused of adopting a piecemeal approach to a systemic flaw. What we therefore need, Mr. President, is a Security Council that better reflects the geographical and developmental diversity of the United Nations today. A Security Council where voices of developing countries and underrepresented regions, including Africa, Latin America, and the vast majority of Asia and the Pacific find their due place at this horseshoe table. And for this, an expansion of the Council in both categories of membership is absolutely essential. This is the only way to bring the Council's composition and decision-making dynamics in line with contemporary geopolitical realities. We can no more hide, Mr. President, behind the smokescreen of the intergovernmental negotiations in the United Nations General Assembly and continue to pay lip service by delivering statements in a process which has no time frame, no text, and no defined goal to achieve. If countries are truly interested in making the Council more accountable and more credible, we call on them. We call on them to come out openly and support a clear pathway to achieve this reform in a time-bound manner through the only established process in the United Nations, which is by engaging in negotiations based on text and not through speaking at each other or past each other, as we have done for the last three decades. Mr. President, I will say that as the threats to international peace and security evolve, 
so must this council. We ask those blocking progress on this vital issue to heed the calls for genuine reform and contribute to making this council truly fit for